Hey guys, welcome to another Python tutorial for beginners. In today's video, we will continue to talk about Python's function. In the first half of this video, we've talked about how to create a function with some arguments and also went through a few examples to get the taste of the function. In this video, let's try to go a bit further and talk about different types of arguments, local versus global variables, as well as a few more examples. So let's get started. So the first topic that we're going to talk about is the function argument. In the previous video, I've showed you how to create some positional required argument. So let's recap about that real quick. So if I have a function like that, print something, and it takes first name and programming language as the argument. And then if I were to print this, so Daniel likes to program in this language. I'm going to use a format method, first name programming language. Okay. So if I were to print this as is, meaning that if I don't specify any argument, print something and then just run it, you will get the type error because you have the two positional required arguments, but none of the arguments is specified in this uh, parenthesis. So in this case, I would have to actually put my first name and programming language, which is Python here. And then if you run this one more time, you'd actually see Danny likes to program in Python. Okay, so now then let's move on to the default argument. So default argument is similar to the positional argument in that you still have to specify your argument like this, but you will specify the default value by setting one or more argument equal to something. And the default argument can be useful if you want to set the default value in a function so that you don't have to specify your argument every time when you call a function. So let's say that I want to set this programming language as the default argument, then all you have to do is just put the equal sign and set the default value Python. And since we specify the default value here, you don't have to actually put this Python value every time when you call a function. Instead, if you just run the function like this, you will still see the Python coming up because you set the Python as the default value for your programming language argument. And the nice thing about the default value here is that you can easily override the default value that you set by passing the different values into the function call. So let's say that Danny likes to program in JavaScript then I can just specify the JavaScript at the position of the programming language. And then if you just run this, this JavaScript will actually override the Python that you set as a default value. So one thing to keep in mind for the default argument here is that the non-default value, in this case, the first name, cannot be followed by the default value. So what I mean by this, so let me show you some example. So let's say that I'm going to make this a non-default value and I'm going to make the first name as the default value. So I'm going to specify Danny. Then this non-default value cannot follow the default value that you have, meaning the non-default values cannot be located at the right side of the default value that you have. So what's going to happen if I run this? So I'm going to delete this Danny here because we set it as our default value. And if I just run this, you will see an error saying that non-defer argument follows the defer argument. So the key here is that the non-defer value cannot be located in the right side of the defer value. So if you want to set the defer value, it always have to be right side of the non-defer argument that you have. So like this. So in our case, the JavaScript will actually be used in the first position, the programming language, and then we set the first name as the defer value. So if I run this, you will see Danny likes to program in JavaScript. Okay, so now let's talk about the keyword argument in a function call. So we have a two function calls here. The first one is using the positional argument function call. So Danny maps the first name, O maps the last name, and so on. The second function call is actually using the keyword argument where you specify the argument name and the value with the equal sign. So when you run this, you will get the two exactly same result as you can see because Python allow you to actually call the function using the positional argument or the keyword argument. But the only difference here is that in the keyword argument, you can easily change the position of the argument. So if I just cut this and put this into the second position, and then, okay, put the comma here and run it one more time, you would actually see the exactly same result because you already specified the argument name here with values. And Python also allows you to use both the positional argument and keyword argument within the same function call. So let me delete this second function call here. And I want to make this Python as a keyword argument. So I'm going to say programming language equal to Python. And when you run this, you would actually see the same result here. But the only thing that you have to be careful here is that let's say that you want to make this O as the keyword argument, but instead of you setting it up as last name equal to O, what happens if you actually put the first name equal to O? In this case, the Danny is the positional argument that maps the first name, and you have a keyword argument here that specifies the first name again. So in this case, when you run this, 
Python will throw an error saying that print something got multiple values for the argument first name because this Danny maps the first name and then the keyword argument first name also maps the first name. That's why this is throwing an error. So if you just change it to last name and then run it, you would actually see the result here. So the next one that we're going to talk about is the variable argument. So the variable argument is a type of argument where you can specify any number of arbitrary argument into the function. So when we look at our previous examples, in this function, we actually specify which kind of arguments that we are expecting into this function. And we also know how many arguments that we're going to expect into this function. But what happens if you don't know how many arguments that you want to actually intake into a specific function? So there are two types of variable arguments. The first one is arc and second one is k-arc. So let's first talk about the arcs first. So let's say that you are building a function function that returns the sum of all the numbers that are passed into the function. In this case, we don't know how many numbers that the function will intake, right? So this is a type of a scenario where variable arguments can be useful. So let me show you an example. So I'm going to create a function say step sum number. And in the parentheses, I'm going to say star arc. And then in the function body, I'm going to use a Python built-in function sum and arc. So what I did here is that in the function argument, I specify the argument with a prefix of an asterisk. And this asterisk actually means that this function can intake any number of arguments. And in the function body, I'm using the Python built-in function sum, which gets the sum of all the given arguments that came into this sum function here. So now we have our function here. Let's try to call this function. So I'm going to call sum numbers. And I can specify any number of arguments, meaning 1, 2, 3, 4. And if I just run this, you will see 10, which is the sum of all the values that we pass into this function. And this function doesn't really care how many arguments that we pass in because we put the asterisk here. And we can do the same thing here, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then run it one more time. It will return 36, which is the sum of all the numbers that we pass into this function. Okay, so now let's talk about the k arc. k arc is similar to arc in that we can pass in any number of arguments into a function, but it allows us to pass in the keyword argument instead of just arguments like this. So let me show you an example here. So let's say that I want to build a function that prints out the student midterm score, and we don't know how many students that we are expecting into that function. So let me first create a function. So that print midterm scores. And then in the function argument, I'm going to specify two asterisks with kr. And in the function body, let's just print this out. So what I did in this function is that I specified a kr argument with a two asterisk as the prefix. So this two asterisk means that this function can intake any number of keyword arguments. So let me call this function. So print midterm. Okay. And then we can specify any number of keyword arguments here. So Danny score is 58. Eddie score is 57 and then score is 24. So if I run this, you will see this keyword argument saying that Danny has a score of 58 and Eddie has a score of 57 and Dan has a score of 24. And the curly braces format is actually a dictionary data type which we haven't actually talked about just yet. And we're going to talk about in later videos over how we can actually parse out the data within this dictionary data type with a more prettier format. So we've just talked about the basics of ARC and KARC. Obviously we haven't talked about various different use cases of how we can utilize them because we haven't learned about other data types such as tuple, list, and dictionary just yet. But once we get to that point, we're going to come back to this arcs and k-arcs so that we can have a better example of using this. Okay, so now let's talk about the local versus global variables. So I have a function paste here for you. So the global variable is specified as the variable that sits outside of function. So this first name sits outside of function. So this is considered as a global variable. And the first name that we see here is considered as a local variable because it sits within the function so that this variable scope is restricted within this function. So what happens if I run this? So if I run this as is, you will see the Danny from global and Danny from local. So this global variable is actually printing out from this line right here where print first name is actually referring to the global variable that we set here and the local variable is coming from the print statement within this function because we are calling this function at the line below here so then what happens if i just comment this first name out and then run this one more time you do actually see Danny from global twice because now the first name printed out from this function is actually referring to the global variable that we set here because we are not actually setting any local variable first name anymore. So then what's going to happen if I just do the opposite, meaning I'm going to actually uncomment this and I'm going to comment global variable. And if I try to run this, 
you will actually see an error saying that the name first name is not defined at the red line here. And this is actually expected because this first name is nowhere to be found because the only first name that you can be found is within this function. But since this first name is a local variable, this print statement, which is outside of the function, cannot really refer to the local variable that's defined within the function. So the key here is that the local variable that we said within the function cannot be accessed within the global scope, as you see, while the global variable that we set outside of the function can be accessed within the function. Okay, so now let's talk about a bit different example here. So let's say that I want to do a variable assignment within this local variable. So I want to set this first name equal to first name plus Danny from local. So my intention here is that I want to bring this global variable into this slot and I want to do a string concatenation between this string and this string. But whenever we run this, we're going to get an error because Python actually takes this first name as the local variable. And it's going to complain because this first name is not specified before this line 42. Because in the line 42, we are trying to create the variable, but this first name is not actually specified yet. So if we run this, you will see an unbound local error saying the local variable first name referenced before the assignment. And this is expected because Python is just complaining that the first name is nowhere to be found. And so then why can we actually bring this global variable into the slot here, right? Because from our previous example, we are actually able to print out the first name coming from the global variable. And the difference actually comes in whenever you try to do a variable assignment. So when you try to actually print the global variable as is, it's going to work. But whenever you try to do the variable assignment within the local variable, the Python is going to complain because Python will always take this as a local variable. So then how can you actually remove this error for now? Then we can just specify the first name here at the top and set it equal to x. And if we run this, you will see x Danny from locals. So it was actually able to concatenate this string to the this string. But this still doesn't really solve our problem, right? Because our initial intention was to actually bring this global variable into this slot uh, and we wanted to do a string concatenation between this string and this string. So then how can you actually achieve this? So we can achieve this by using the Python's keyword global. So instead of putting the first name like this, we can do global first name. So what I'm doing here is that, hey, for the first name slot here, I want to actually use the global variable that we created up at the top here. And then I want to bring in this global variable into the local scope here. And so that whenever we are creating the local variable here, I want to use this first name coming from the global variable. And whenever we run this, you will see Danny from global and Danny from local, which is an expected behavior that we wanted to see. Okay, so now let's try to have a simple example here. So I'm going to create a function called print introduction. So this function will print out the introduction for the person, first name, last name, and hobby. But this time we're going to try to get the arguments from the end user using the Python's built-in function called input. So let's create a function that print introduction. And then I want to make it first name, last name, and hobby. And let's make this a default argument. So I'm going to say programming. And then I'm going to write a print statement. My name is 01. My hobby is 2. Okay. And then format parentheses first name, last name, and hobby. Okay, so now we have a function created. So if we were to call this function, I'm going to say print introduction. And then normally we would have to actually specify the value for the first name, last name, and hobby. But in this case, let's try to actually get the values from user input. So I'm going to say input, enter your first name space, and another input for the last name, enter your last name space. Okay. And for the hobby, I'm just going to leave it as is because we already have a default value set up programming. So if I run this, you will see the prompt saying that enter your first name. So I'm going to say my name is Danny and enter your last name comes up and I'm going to put it O. And you see that my name is Danny O, my hobby is programming. So in this case, what we did here is that we actually called a function that we created, but instead of us actually specifying the argument manually, we actually got the argument from the end user, which is me in this case, with some prompt that we have here. Okay, so now let's move on to the second example. So in this example, we're going to write a function that returns the area of circle. So that return area of circle and takes the radius as the argument. I'm just going to return uh, the pi times radius times radius. And then let me make the pi as a global variable. Pi equals 3.14. And then I'm going to write a print statement, return area of circle. And then in here, 
I'm going to get the radius from the user input just like this one. So I'm going to do input, enter the radius space. And the input function, by default, it takes a string value. But in order for us to actually calculate the area, we need to actually convert this to an integer. So I'm going to do a type conversion using the int function, like that, and wrap it around. And so if you just run this, you will see a prompt saying that enter the radius. So I'm going to say 5, and then you will see 78.5, which is the area of the circle when the radius is 5. Okay guys, that's it for this video. We've talked about different argument types for function as well as local versus global variables with some error scenarios. And also we had a few examples of using Python's built-in functions such as sum and input. So if you have any questions, please feel free to comment down below. And you can find all the content in the GitHub link below in the description. And also if you haven't already subscribed, please click the subscribe and like button. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you in the next videos.